Welcome to the VX Factor Live. This is our first episode, and the VX Factor is all about profiles and entrepreneurship. We'll be right back. And we're back. Welcome again to the VX Factor Live. Uh, happy to have Nadim Ahmed with us today. Uh, Nadim is the owner of the VentureX by the Galleria. Mm -hmm. And i um, happy to have you. Thanks for joining us today on our very first episode of the VX Factor Live. Yeah, thank uh, you for having me. Sure. You, know, it's just gonna, you have to listen to me for the next 10, 20, or <laughs> half an hour. Or so. Good luck with that. Okay. <laughs> well, um, the whole idea behind this show is to profile entrepreneurs. Okay. So that's why I said it was profiles in entrepreneurship. Yep. So a l why don't we start by just tell, tell us a little bit about your background. Kind sure. of w like yeah. where you're from, maybe yeah. where maybe where you went to school, something that something in your background that kind of lit the fire in you to sure. become a business owner and an entrepreneur. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just there's multiple things. Um, I mean, my my grandfather was an entrepreneur, and he and he did a lot of different businesses. Um, I mean, he came from a village in India. He went to the city, and he took. Um, like he migrated like with 20 cows into the city of mm -hmm. India and, and, and started a milk factory. So I thought that was pretty impressive. And then uh, just his personality too. I mean, he would, he's a, he's a Muslim in terms of religion, but um, like even during Christmas, he would, he would give all our neighbors like Christmas cakes and during different religions. So it's just, I, I just like that personality, him being part of the community and just supporting the community kind of wanted to do that myself. Um, so that's part of it. You know, there's a lot of things that makes a person, so I can't go back to one thing. So that's just mm -hmm. one of it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but I'm, as far as where I'm from, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm from, like, <laughs> everywhere. From, I grew up in St. Louis. Um, I went to school in uh, Indiana at Purdue University. Okay. I did uh, electrical engineering there. Um, did my MBA there as well um, while I was working at a pharmaceutical company. Um, so yeah, I've, I've traveled everywhere, you know, and in the end, it's my, my I guess my, my passion has always been business. Uh, even when I was working for companies, I would take products for them to, to market. You know, they would come to me with business ideas. I would look at it, evaluate it, do business case, look at competitors, um, present it to, to the company of how much money we think we could make from it, um, and then work with engineers to, to launch it. Um, so we, you know, I would do the marketing, the the the, the finance part of it, and then um, actual project management of it as well. So, um, so my with my background in engineering and MBA, that that helped with all that. Um, so that's that's my background. And uh, well, it sounds like it was an incubator for yeah. be becoming a business owner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind yeah. of. I I did learn a lot from that, and I'm grateful for all the opportunities I got with these corporations. Um, you know, and I, 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 I kind of wanted to use that, but um, put it's kind of like a poker game. I want to put it all in um, and, and bet on myself versus, you know, playing with other people's money is, um, you know, when you don't have your heart and passion in it because you're just getting a paycheck um, versus I'm in this all, all in. And if I, if I think I could do it for others, why can't I do it for myself? Mm -hmm. um, and that's really why I... Um, Stopped working in corporate, quit my job at Children's Hospital, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, started this. Mm -hmm. so. so, what were some of the, what were some of the challenges for you in making that decision? Kind of, yeah. cut, kind of cutting the cord. Sure. I mean, did you already had you already started your family at that time? Yeah. And, so uh, uh, I have I have three boys. Um, actually, funny thing is, uh, one week before I opened this, uh, I had my third son. Uh, he was. He was about to come at the same day as the grand opening, which didn't happen, thankfully. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be there. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, uh, we had challenges. Me working at Children's Hospital, having health insurance, and things like that. You know, my wife was worried about all that. Um, I don't, I don't really. I, I know there's fear in things like that, but I, I don't know. I mean, I just in those kind of things, it um, it didn't create fear for me or any kind of issue or concerns. It was just like. I do. I make a calculated decision and go with it. Um, so it w I wasn't concerned. Yeah, I, I, there's always a question: Is it going to be successful or not? But if it's not, I'd figure something else out. So it wasn't. 
I wasn't like, this is going to be the dead end if it doesn't work out. Um, you know, makes life interesting. Um, so yeah, the challenges were making sure my, with my third son, with three kids, um, having an income, having health insurance, and I'm leaving all that. I left that a month um, before my son was born, and I, I started this. So, um, and I'm, I'm here now, I guess, so. So let me, let me ask a quick follow-up for people who are in a situation now similar to what you were. Maybe right. they're in the corporate world, but they know that they really want something else yeah. out of life yeah. and out of their career. Yeah. And so they're thinking about kind of making that jump, that, that leap of faith. What were some of the things, what, what would be some advice you would give someone in that situation about some of the things that they need to prepare themselves for? Sure. Like what, what was the... I'm curious to know what the ramp up was yep. for you to actually like, okay, this is my last week or you know right. whatever, and I'm I'm actually yeah. leaving and doing it. <clears throat> you seem you know you're obviously a very analytical mm -hmm. person. So what was that process like for you leading up to that? I mean, was it like six months before that you started like making preparations? Sure. Or, I mean, you just uh, I, I, I've always dabbed in businesses here and there. Uh, you know, I've done. Um, business on the side uh, just is, is interesting to me. It's kind of fun. It's kind of like a monopoly game, you know, and uh, so I've always done that. I mean, as far as entrepreneurs looking to do it, um, it's it's kind of really, it's. It, I don't have an answer for that. It's really up to you. You have to really understand what you're good at, what you want to do. It's like, you know, me being a doctor doesn't mean everyone should be a doctor or me being an entrepreneur doesn't mean everyone should be an entrepreneur. Um, so re you really have to kind of know yourself and know what what is it that you're comfortable doing? How much? How far can you push yourself? And what is it that you, in the end of the day, you'll enjoy, kind of, doing and and are good at? Um, you know, you want to make sure you're doing a business. Any business you do, you want to be really good at it, um, better than everyone else. Um, that's why customers will come to you. So if if you don't think you can be that, then I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend doing it. If someone else in the market is is doing it. Um, equally as good as you or better and you have no way to differentiate, uh, I would recommend uh, sticking to your day job. Um, and it's kind of like the book E-Myth. I mean, if you um, read it, if you haven't, um, you know, it's like a, a baker. Um, he shouldn't open up a cake shop. I mean, that's not the whole book, but that's what I got from it mm. because he won't be baking a cake the whole time. He would be running a business. So mm. understand what are you really good at. Are you really wanting to bake cakes if that's the case then stick in a company and bake cakes mm. right so um, and I mean and, and then the other part of your question it, I started August 2016 before like WeWork came here and um, you know I was looking at some of the property that WeWork was looking at and I didn't get it because it's WeWork um, so I, I've been looking uh, for a while I've also been in this kind of industry in the past by selling uh, cubicles um, the customized cubicles, um, for, you know, buying them from Taiwan and selling them here, customized. Um, so I, I was familiar with, familiar with the industry, and um, um, so I've always been looking at it. And you know, obviously, I did my financial analysis and uh, and then competitors, things like that. What I would do for any company, mm -hmm. and base my decision on that. Well, cool. So. so when we come back from, we're going to take a short break here in a second. But when okay. we come back from that, I want to talk to you about the decision that you made to buy into a franchise as opposed to starting a business on your own from the, from scratch. Because sure. yep. I think that's something that our, our audience will be very interested in as well, like what, what drove that decision. So I think that's a good segue you know, to, to get into. So we're going to take a short break um, and hear from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Adults in the U.S. consume five and a half hours of video content every day almost one and a half hours on digital devices. 64% of consumers say that watching a marketing video has influenced a purchasing decision. Adding video to a website landing page can increase conversion by up to 80%. Are you ready to win with video marketing? Now is your chance to learn. Easy steps to add video to your current marketing. Why a three-tiered video content strategy is best. Best practices for live video on social media. Pros and cons of professional versus DIY video. And tips for getting better results with video. 
Gain the confidence to grow your business and brand with video marketing. Request your speaker today. The true definition of a co-working space is set up for the small businesses. This is my first time um, foraying into becoming an entrepreneur and so leaving corporate life behind, it's a very new adventure. What I like about VentureX is actually the collaborative and community focus that you can get here. The events that go on, I've actually actually picked up clients at these events and some of the members here are actually my clients. So I think that's a major plus. The, the way Nadeem um, is always there and is ready to listen to you and very flexible with any of your needs. Um, that's remarkable and very, very different from all the other experiences that I've had. I love working out of here. I love the atmosphere. I love the people. I love the fact that sometimes different members will come up and just kind of converse and we get to kind of get out of our own heads and help each other. I like the design of, of VentureX. It's, it's motivational. It's inspirational. Um, and each, each location is different and unique in its own way. Being in the architecture industry and in the construction industry, I'm on to my job sites like four to five times a day. And so in and out is very easy here. Um, parking right in front of you and coming right in is very, very convenient. If you're sitting at a desk, you're not making money in real estate. So it's nice to be able to be mobile and still have an office setting where you can still meet, greet, and potentially meet new clients even. They have all the amenities I need, you know, so from printers to food to coffee, uh, if there's something I need, you know, they'll go out and try to seek it and get it for me. So I think I, it's a major plus for me for what I do. I feel like my company looks bigger than it is, which is a one person company. Taking away all these little headaches from an entrepreneur who, for the first time ever, I'm having to figure out how to be everything. <laughs> That's an amazing thing to feel like I've got some support system behind me. To really, really feel loved in the community, which is which, which helps anybody who's an entrepreneur and business owner. You know, it's nice to know that you got a whole team of cheerleaders uh, backing you up and cheering you on. Um, and so that's really how VentureX has helped me. So we're back with uh, Nadim Ahmed from uh, VentureX by the Galleria. And when we left off, it kind of uh, led you into what we're going to be, what I wanted to talk to you about next, which, which I think a lot of people would be very interested sure. in. And uh, that is why you decided to be a franchise owner, to buy into a franchise as opposed to starting something on your own yep. from, from scratch. So yeah, um, you know, kind of <clears throat> to my earlier point, um, you want to do, you want to be really good at what you do, um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of competitors in co-working, mm -hmm. and to differentiate yourself and be as good as them or, or not have a disadvantage to them, um, was part of the reason I went with the franchise. Um, you know, I, I can I could I have done it on my own? Yes. Uh, would I be as good or? Or, or have the chance to be better than my competitors? No, probably not, not by myself. So um, that's why you need the support. If I was in another business, you know, you could, you could probably do it with our franchise. But in this one, being so competitive, you needed those. Uh, VentureX, you know, has multiple locations, had a specific brand that was designed by Gensler, same, the, you know, world-renowned, like, architects that did Google and Facebook. Um, they had a good feel and style that I was going for in terms of uh, it's modern but it's still warm mm -hmm. um, and then they have a great team you know they have um, we we don't we're not we don't know everything we're doing yet obviously we're new and we're learning and we're getting better um, so um, but the, the people behind it they're all great to work for and they're really working hard to make sure VentureX is one of the best out there um, so. So, so you were the first one to plant the VentureX flag yeah, in, in, Dallas, right, in Dallas, right? <laughs> well, I, was, I, I was actually the first one to sign a franchise agreement yeah. as well. Uh, I wasn't the first one to open because I leased my space versus uh, owning it. If you own it, it's, it's a little quicker. Mm -hmm. But I was the first one to open in Dallas. Um, and now, one, one year later, we got seven, eight locations mm -hmm. uh, and growing. You know, we'll, the end of the year, I'm assuming we'd have about 15 locations. 
uh, more than any other uh, co-working space in Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, we have some different things we offer, and I'm, I'm proud of what we have created, the whole team has. So that leads me into my next question. Obviously, it's a very, very crowded business vertical. Right. You kind of mentioned that before. I mean, yep. there's, there's a lot of competition, yep. right? But at the same time, with as quick as VentureX is expanding, mm -hmm. so what kind of unique challenges does that present, I, you know, yep. from, from a business owner standpoint? I mean, you I mean, we're we are members here, so yeah. so we kind of know firsthand about some of the, you know, some of the value and amenities and some of those other differentiating factors. Right. But what is really the, in your mind, what is really the big differentiator, not only between you and your competition, but also, um, you know, with all the other Venture X locations opening right. as well. Sure. You know? So, you know, and we're used to, like, looking at schools and seeing that, okay, one school is better than another. You know, there's these ratings on Harvard versus Stanford. Um, same thing with, with gyms. And the reason I bring those two up is because uh, the reason I'm comparing them to co-working is because that's, those are things you could do at home, but you also choose to do it at school or at a gym. So you could work out at home. You could go homeschooling, but you decide to go to a school because of all the additional amenities it comes with. You know, it's not just the books, uh, it's the community, it's the, everyone that comes with schools and, and all the resources you get. Same thing with gyms, yeah, you could have a treadmill and, and, and workout facility at, at your home, and people do, but they still go to the gym, just it's a di different at atmosphere, just different um, energy. So, so similar reasons of why co-working spaces work. Uh, I'm not saying it's only for people who work from home, it's, it's for corporate too. Um, you know, so there's different energy, different aura, and all the co-working space. I love them all. I mean, they're all awesome. I love visiting them. They're like museums to me. Um, so they're all unique in their own way. Um, we are just, we differentiate in a way. Um, we're not necessarily the, the coolest one in town. Uh, we don't try to be. We, we try to be authentic, genuine. Um, so it's the design itself speaks to that also. We, we try to be warm, not too flashy. Uh, but yet still m modern, open big windows, big ceilings, uh, so you could come in and feel like a professional environment. Hmm. Um, so it's, it's not a place where it's, it's, you come here to work and your clients could see that too, but at the same time it's not rigid, it's not a mm. bunch of walls and hallways. Um, so that's one way we differentiate is by the design. We put high quality furniture and as I mentioned, we, you know, it was designed by Gensler. Um, Herman Miller furniture and then and the West Elm and all that stuff. Mm. Um, so very high quality everything from internet to to the coffee and um, so we make sure of that. Uh, but along with that, another way we differentiate is well. So the first way, just to uh, summarize, is we differentiate by by not by targeting people between like the 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 cool co-working and the rigid uh, office executive offices. So we're in between. Um, I would say like a, a WeWork and a Regis. Mm -hmm. um, and the second point is it's uh, franchise owned. Um, so you're working with the local entrepreneurs like me and l many others like me who are, who are going through the same struggle, same growth process as a lot of the companies. And I've seen that here. Um, I've seen a lot of companies grow as I've grown uh, and we, we help each other. You know, it's, it's a community and we want to, we want to, um, just grow together and, and you kind of see it's not an employee just working there and it kind of goes back to my point when when an employee is working not not uh, targeting employees but you don't have it all in versus an entrepreneur who's invested their business and things like that into it and that's why kind of switching topics but I also believe as employees you should be given equity or stocks or, or profit margins and that's what I plan to do with my staff as well um, because I want them to have some ownership of it as well. Um, but anyway, that was that's on the side mm -hmm. note. But um, going back, yeah, it's really because it's owned by a franchise owner. We really we care about our business. You know, if there's any uh, feedback, we want to fix it right away. We we want it to be as perfect as possible. It's not something I have to send to corporate and get their feedback, and they don't really know what's going on in a local level. Um, you know, I, I hear it from mm -hmm. first person, and I, I sleep at night thinking about it and mm -hmm. get up in the morning thinking about <laughs> it. So, uh, you know, every day it's like, what's my priorities? Because I have 100 things I have to deal with, but it's like I prioritize and figure out what's, what's more important to my members.
So, well, one of the things that we've noticed that we appreciate, and we we've seen a lot of the kind of you know different um, brands, if you will, sure. in in the co-working space, and and been involved with a couple of them. And uh, to your point, one of the things that we really appreciate about uh, about your location here uh, is the fact that it's it's like not a, it's not a college frat party, mm -hmm. yeah. but at the same time it's not stuffy, right? Yeah, you know. And yeah. so there's a nice level of kind of professionalism amongst all the members, and you know, a good rapport amongst the members, and and I think that that really comes from from you kind of setting that tone, oh, you. you know, as the franchise owner and, and really working at, at kind of creating that environment for, you know, for everyone mm -hmm. to, to still be able to collaborate and kind of network and meet each other sure. and, and develop those relationships without necessarily having to start drinking beer at yeah. three o'clock, <laughs> you, yeah. 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 you know, open tap kind of, yeah. you know, situation sure. that we've seen in a few other places. So I think it's a nice balance, Good. you know. Good. Yeah. Um, so to kind of to kind of start to wrap things up a little bit, um, you have plans to expand here, yeah, and and take on even more space here, right? And then I've heard you talk about maybe an additional location, oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> as yeah. well, yeah. So a little sadistic maybe in in, <laughs> in that in that regard, but. I would just be curious, and I and I think viewers would be curious too. Kind of, you know, now you just had your one year yep. anniversary of this location. Mm -hmm. you, you've already started the plans for the expansion here, right? Um, to make this even more successful. Kind of, what is your uh, what's your kind of three to five year outlook sure. for your business, and and how do you go about kind of setting you know yep. setting that outlook and and um, and wanting to to grow and be more successful at the but at the same time doing it in a way where you know that you'll actually be able to handle the business and, right. and handle that success right yeah I mean uh, talking about handling that's that's the, you don't want to grow too fast right mm -hmm. and so that's always a concern um, you know and and it, it kind of goes back to my earlier point of understand what you want to be doing why why am I doing this you know is it just to just have more and more and more um, and, and really, for me, it's kind of, um, I see what do you do during the day as one of the most important things in your lives because that's, that's when you live, is like during your work. Um, so make sure you enjoy it. Uh, and so for me, it's as long as I'm enjoying what I'm doing, I, I'll continue to do it. Um, so I will continue to grow and continue to expand. Like, uh, like Mark said, I'm expanding this location. Um, just based on people's needs, you know, the, they need training rooms. There's, we need more office spaces, um, a lot of other things. I'm taking in inputs on like a photo studio and things like that, and adding that to the design. Um, so it's based on the needs that my customers have, um, and then the, the expansion to the next location. It's really based on um, you know the opportunities, and um, I'm not going to force myself to do that. If, um, but it's it's more. If, if it m makes sense in the numbers wise of course but as well uh, as well as personally is that what I want to do uh, if I want to continue to uh, support the community and and working on entrepreneurship type of work um, because at the end of the day I I would enjoy it I don't really plan to retire um, I, I plan to just and I don't plan to work either I mean I just plan to just be busy and busy with stuff that I enjoy doing and kind of another reason why I quit corporate is I want to be just doing things that I that I enjoy. So, um, so yeah, we look for more venture exits, you know, and uh, who knows where where life will take us. But um, you know, hope to continue to support the entrepreneur communities around here. So, yeah, well, cool. Yeah, well, it sounds like thank it's going to be exciting over the yeah, next we'll over see. the next few yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. And so, but thank you, thank you for for having me here as well. Yeah. Thanks so. for coming. Thanks All for right. joining thank us you. on our first episode. So hopefully uh, everyone in the audience uh, we learned something interesting today. I know that I did, and we hope that you will join us on our next episode next week on Tuesday uh, at 10.30 a.m. will be our next episode of the VX Factor Live. So thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you next week.